Hi, I'm Mark. Welcome back to Foothill Paint Fabrication. Well, as you can see, today we'll be working on the grill off that 1950 Chevy truck. Uh, as far as I know, it's never been in a front-end collision, which is pretty remarkable for a 70-plus-year-old truck. And uh, at first glance, it looks pretty good. So let's move in close, take a good look at this thing, and see what kind of challenges it might be giving us today, and we'll get to work on it. Okay, I've got the grill facing down, and so this would be the inside. So just a general quick look of it, everything looks pretty straight. If we come around and look on this side, this is where it mounts up to the fender. It looks really nice and straight. We come to this one, the strengthening rib here, and it's got a dent, kind of hoop de doo going on there, and I'm sure that's not supposed to be there because I can see where it, where it hit. So that's got to be straightened because the other side uh, is nice and straight. Uh, this, this rib is nice and straight. Um, you may notice there's a bolt right here, a big bolt with a hole in it, and that's for a safety chain. I guess these trucks are prone to having the hoods fly open, uh, especially when you're going down the freeway, and that actually happened to this truck. So a chain drops down through off the hood and uh, locks on there to keep that from happening. So that's going to stay. Then we come around this side, and it looks all pretty good. We just have that one little thing to straighten. And on the underside here, just a little bit, a tiny bit of flash rust, no big deal. Uh, but it all looks really good. So let's flip it over and look at the other side. Okay, once again, we look down through here. These all look very straight and parallel. I'll be taking some measurements to just to double check that they are parallel and not tweaked a little bit. Now, these would be painted blue, and then when the chrome pieces are bolted back on along here, uh, that'll be the shadow line inside there. So it looks like this was painted white originally uh, when the truck was red so it had been red exterior with the white grill with the chrome pieces on it so uh, everything else looks pretty good around here and there's really no door dings or anywhere it doesn't look like any of these uh, ribs have been uh, the rivets have been cut off and re pieces have been replaced so this looks all original so it's looking really good right now pretty happy to be able to bust through this, just straighten that one thing, and then we're going to take some measurements, like I said, to just double check, make sure everything's running parallel. It's going to look really clean when the truck is done. Okay, before we start any work on this at all, I want to go through and just take some measurements just to make sure these all run parallel to each other and there's no uh, surprises. You know, anybody could have put their knee on here or, you know, hand or anything and bent these. Um, anything could have happened. So we just want to make sure they're running nice and parallel. So if the, any little tweaking needs to be done, we do it right off the bat. We don't have to worry about it later. You don't want to be looking at the truck when you're done and go realize, oh, crap, you know, it's got a little wave in that grill. So oh, all I'm going to do is I'm just going to use my vernier caliper here. I'm just, it's a little digital cheapy, but I'm just going to use it as a gauge and I'll just set it down here on the top of one to the top of the other. And then it looks like all of these are exactly the same distance where they're riveted on. So we know that's the distance. So we'll check down here. Looks good. Looks good. Looks good. So now everywhere they intersect these brackets, they should be exactly right on, which they are. But down here in the middle, right at these bends, you know, these kinds move around quite a bit. So let's check the, there to see how they look. And that looks good. Looks good there. This one's a little different. Might have a little dip, dip right there. It's good right there. Yeah, so this one might be a little low right there, so we'll come back to it. So that one looks good. Looks good there. This one feels like it's a little low, but it's probably nothing. So all in all, these look really good. This one here might be a little bit off, so I'm going to double check all my, my measurements there. And see, this, these, this one feels like it could go up a little bit, but not by much. It's, uh, you know, 3.30 seconds. And, you know, I realize it sounds a little picky, but when you're all done, you're looking at it, um, after you've bolted all your chrome pieces back on, the last thing you want to do is see something that you could have caught and you know, taken five minutes to fix. So all these look really good. The next thing we want to check is where all the chrome pieces uh, bolt back on. Now, some of these have been drilled out a little bit. They're a little oblong. And that could have just been at the factory when they were putting it together. You know, the holes didn't light up quite right. 
the biggest thing I'm looking for is these tabs being bent out of shape. So when the chrome piece goes back on, it doesn't lay like it's supposed to. And most of the time it's a pucker. So when they tighten it up, it puckers that up. And then, you know, these have these little lips on here. So you want to make sure that chrome piece lays on here nice and smooth. And it looks just gorgeous when it's done. I mean, it's a, kind of a focal point of the front of the truck, right? So we've got a few that are just going to take a little bit of hammering. I'll just put a dolly behind there and tap those flat just to make sure that when that chrome piece goes on, that it sits right up against the sheet metal right here and not sitting up on a little volcano where the, that got uh, you know, punched up a little bit. So we're going to go through and check all those. I'll do that off camera. And then we're going to flip it over and get to straightening that bracket, this brace right here, and, and see if we can get that knocked straight real quick. Okay, so we can see the... Uh, dent right here. If I lay this dolly right up here, it's got a pretty good little hoop to do in it. So I'm just going to lay the dolly up here. It's a little small horseshoe call. I call it a horseshoe one. Anyways, we're just going to lay it up here. And and all I'm really doing is just backing that up so I don't drive that and bend the rest of this over. We want it to stay where it's at and just push this out, this one dent out. Watch out, there's a sliver right there. There's a little rib, you know, down through here. So we want to get that. We want to make sure we're hitting up here, not on the rib down inside there. It's coming together. It's got a little hoop to do right here too. And you never see this stuff, but we have to make sure this is, uh, we straighten the fender. So, you know, and the pan that this bolts to and all that. So. If I, we straighten all that and then we go to put this thing back together, now this piece isn't going to be in the right spot. So I'm going to go ahead and keep tapping on this a little bit real quick and then we'll start taking some measurements to make sure it's at the right spot. Okay, we got it hammered pretty straight, uh, but this lip is still a little tweaked over. And with that uh, rib on there, I'm not able to get a good swing on it. So I've got these pliers here. Um, my son actually gave me these for Father's Day and you can see they have very flat jaws, no teeth and they run parallel so they're good for grabbing nuts and bolts and uh, doing sheet metal work. So that's what we're going to do here. So I'm just going to grab this and just slowly inch my way down and I can run them down till they hit that little lip right there, that little bead. And then I can just put a little bend on them and so I don't bend this whole thing I'm just going to kind of keep my thumb on the back side here and just try to get this nice and straight. We'll take a look. It's looking pretty good right there. Since these don't have teeth on them, they come in really handy on this so they don't gouge or dig in. So it's, it's pretty straight. So let's get the tape measure and measure the distance from here to the edge. And then uh, we'll make it match whatever the other side is. Okay, if you measure these uh, on the other side that's not damaged at all, it measures just at 10 inches at the bottom. And then it flares out to 11 inches at the top here. So we're pretty close. I just need to do a little tweak on it. Uh, I think this has a little twist in it. When it got bent over, it kind of bent the whole thing. So we're just going to put these pliers on here. And we're just going to give it a little bit of a bump here. Make sure everything's nice and straight. And it looks a lot better already. So let's measure it out. And we're right on the money. So we're right on 11 inches. We sight down it. It looks pretty straight. It's got a little bit of a hoop to do in it, nothing super noticeable. I'll uh, measure the distance from this bolt hole to the side over here on the other side, and then we'll decide if that's in the right spot. Okay, so the other side is from here to the center of that hole is 10 and 3 16 and we are right on 10 and 3 16 to the center of this one. So this is good. We're looking good right here. We're just going to clean that up a little bit. It's not like you see a lot of this, but you know, these things all bolt back together. So uh, you want to make sure that you're not trying to tweak something after it's in paint. So you want to make sure, you know, and if you have the truck, you could do all this work and then try to bolt it back on and see how it fits. 
and then make sure everything's good and then you pull it apart and do your paint work on it. So it all looks really good. I'm gonna double check this little flange right here, make sure it's not been bent down. It looks pretty good. But I'm gonna lay a straight edge across there and see how they look. And then other than that, I think we are about done getting stuff straightened on this thing. Now it's time to get it cleaned up and sanded and ready for some primer. Okay, so we got uh, everything straightened out. I'm really happy with the way everything looks. I got that brace straightened. All the measurements are matching side to side, so I'm confident that uh, we're good to go on that. I did take it outside, pressure washed it real good to get all the nooks and crannies, and any paint that wanted to fly off um, flew off with the pressure washer. And uh, so now it's, uh, you know, how to prep this. So there's a lot of uh, paint that's uh, fairly good, but there's a lot of paint that's not so good along the edges here and some other places. So uh, my plan is, is to sand this again. The owner had already sanded it. We've got a lot of nooks and crannies in here that are hard to get to. So it's just where you got to use your thumbs and you got to get in there the best you can and then use a scotch bright pad where you can't reach with sandpaper and to get this prepped really nice. Now it's going to get primed and then sand it again. So what I'm going to do, it's a pretty nice day today, so I'm just going to take it outside, grab a bucket of water. I'm going to use some fairly aggressive, this is wet and dry uh, 220, so I'm going to wet sand this whole thing, feather out some of these uh, chips and stuff like that, and all the areas that are going to be uh, seen, you know, even after the chrome's put on, you'll still see these parts. Um, I'm going to make sure those are you know, a really good shape and then uh, then we can clean it up and get it primed and then we can basically almost just do a final sand on it and it'll be ready for color and clear. So I'm going to take it outside. We're going to get it sanded up. I'm not going to bore you with that kind of work. Uh, it's just uh, sanding, but it's going to take a while to get all these little areas to make sure uh, they're all sanded properly and scuffed properly. I can see a lot of shiny paint on here where it's hard to reach. So we're going to go ahead and do that and then uh, I'll bring you back. Okay, we got it wet sanded and then I uh, washed it with soap and water and then pressure washed it and then uh, sanded some more and then pressure washed it and let it dry and then I brought it back in. I had to do a little bit more hand sanding some spots I didn't hit. So I feather edged everything out, all the chips. There were a lot of chips along the edges here from, you know, probably rock chips and over the years and then just rough handling. So it, uh, it's looking pretty good. So I sanded everything so it's all feathered out. So hopefully when I get one good wet coat, a primer on the whole thing, it, uh, it just needs a final sand. It's ready for color and clear. So all the little nooks and crannies, I just took one of these uh, scrubbies and I cut it up into small pieces, you know, to get down inside these little nooks and crannies and all these other little brackets and everything all around the rivets and everywhere. So I just use these up and I cut them small because I can get it down inside there and it doesn't waste it. And then as soon as it starts getting soft and worn out, I just chuck it and grab another one. So out of a full scrubby, I can get, you know, nine of these things and it, uh, it goes pretty quick. So I just get down in all those little spots. And uh, as you can see, there's a lot of white showing. And of course the uh, chrome pieces go over the top here, only the little lip shows. So it's looking really good. Got the bottom underneath sanded really well. All that rust is sanded away. So now all we need to do is get one good full wet coat of primer on it, inside and out, front and back, and then we'll let that set up and then we can get a final sand on it. It'll be ready for color and clear. Okay, I got the, uh, the grill all uh, cleaned off, tacked off, blown off. I just got it hang hanging right here by a couple of wires so I can make sure I can reach all the way around it. So I got some primer mixed up. Let me grab the respirator and we'll get a good uh, one good wet coat on this thing to start and see how much material we have left.
Okay, so I got a good wet coat over the whole thing, everywhere I could reach, and uh, some of, a lot of these areas you're not even going to be able to see, but it's important for me to try to encapsulate as much of that uh, multi-layers of paint and everything else that's going on uh, with this polyester primer to kind of seal it all down together. So when I spray the color coat on, even if it's down in nooks and crannies that I've only hit with a Scotch-Brite pad, I know that uh, that polyester primer is going to take the base, the color coat, a lot better than just, you know, multi-layers of other types of paint uh, that are, you know, who knows how old. So uh, the next coat will just hit all the surfaces that show very well, and then uh, that'll give us a good, good base to sand from. And hopefully, uh, we may need to do a little bit of spot priming on it, but uh, we may be able to go straight to uh, Sandy with 400 and 600 uh, once we get this smoothed out and it'll be ready to spray. So cross our fingers on that, make it an easy one. So we're going to let this flash off and then we'll get another coat on it. Okay, it's uh, flashed off all the way. I'm going to go ahead. I barely mixed any up to spray this thing. So I got just, I think, enough to get these front facing uh, parts one more time. And uh, all we have to do is clean the gun, let it set up overnight, and we can start sanding on it. All right, that's it. I'm gonna clean the gun and uh, we're gonna call this a day. Okay, so next day, uh, these are all dried and cured out, uh, hard as a rock, and they're looking really, really good. Um, all these uh, grill pieces are looking great. So we're gonna sand it with some 221st um, dry, and I've got uh, just a small piece here and a kind of a half worn out Scotch Brite pad I'm gonna fold and put inside there. And that's gonna help me as I sand we can bridge over anything and instead of just using my fingers and have putting finger marks in here. So the 220 is going to allow me to just kind of uh, go over the whole thing lightly and make sure all the, there's no orange peel or anything. Then we can move up to a finer uh, grit, 400, and then maybe hit it with some 600 too. And then if, we, if nothing shows up, then all we have to do is clean it really well, uh, kind of scotch pride all the nooks and crannies again and clean it up and it'll be ready for color and clear. So let's, uh, let me jump through this uh, 220 grit real quick here and then we'll move on to something finer. Okay, that just about does it with the 220. Now I was able to uh, smooth out all the areas I had feather edged before we put primer on it and they're all looking really good. There's a little bit of blue showing through here and there. I'm not really concerned about that. I can spray color coat right over the top of that. It's not going to hurt it. Uh, it's not going to lift it in any way. So, uh, but we were able to smooth all the area, bad areas out down inside here. So now we're going to move to the 400 grit. Now 400 grit, it's going to go super fast because uh, the 220 did all the heavy lifting to smoothing out the orange peel at any other little uneven spot or anything. Now the 400 is just going to take the 220 sand scratches out. So let me grab that and uh, we'll run over this thing real quick and see how it turns out. Okay, the 400 grit's just going to be the same drill, but uh, less. So I'm not, I'm not looking for any bad spots or anything. Anything shows up, I'll switch back to the 220. But right now, we're just trying to make this uh, primer look like glass. So we're sanding it just really super fast. Hit all the areas. We're going to come back with a uh, Scotch-Brite pad and get all these little nooks and crannies and everywhere. But right now, we are just trying to smooth out the sand scratches from the 220. Okay, that's about it for the 400. Now, uh, I had to go back and use 220 a couple of times because when you're sanding with the 400, you start to get everything, it's kind of getting like glass-like. Uh, you can really feel it while you're sanding. Uh, it's like lumps almost. So I had to go back and hit a few little spots with the 220. 
uh, smooth those out and now just go back to 400 to get the sand scratches out. So I'm going to go ahead and take this outside and just get a bucket of water and go over it with some 600 wet and dry just real fast just to get this thing smoothed out really, really nice uh, to make sure when the color coat goes on, it lays down beautiful. So I'm going to just run out there real quick and uh, we'll wet sand this thing, get it hosed off and dried and then I'll bring you back and we'll see how it looks. Okay, I got it all sanded with the uh, wet and dry 600 and wet sanded it. And it's feeling really good, really good. So this is, uh, this is ready for color. Now I did go through the blue here and there, but I, I'm not concerned about it. That uh, base coat isn't, isn't gonna lift that old blue. As um, long as we got all the old layers kind of covered and sealed up and that's what's important. So as you can see, it's looking really nice. I uh, use a Scotch white pad and got all the nooks and crannies and everywhere. So this is really done and ready for uh, color and clear. So it's probably going to go in the house, not stay in the shop and get all dirty and dusty and get a chance of bugs pooping on it or something. So I'm going to set this aside and wait till I get another uh, piece or two uh, small pieces to paint blue and I'll do them all at once. So as far as I'm concerned, this grill is ready for color and clear. Okay, that wraps up this video and getting the grill ready for color and clear. Uh, it didn't take much repairs, luckily just a few bent areas, and, uh, but we had a lot of paint to feather out and everything else, but it, uh, it worked out really well. The primer did its job. This thing is smoother and silk, uh, and it's ready for color and clear. So I'm really happy to bust this out really quick on this video. So thanks for joining me here at Foothill Paint Fabrication. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button if you haven't already. And send me those uh, pictures of your projects. I'd love to see what's going on and post them at the end of a video. We'll see you on the next one.